everybody and welcome back to the channel my name is hack and in this video you are checking out the ultimate solo build for new world this is the immortal warrior build where we're using an incredibly strong combination of the hatchet for melee damage as well as the life staff for defense survivability and healing i've been playing this build a lot lately even in higher level zones and nothing i've come across so far has been able to put this build down with this setup, you can solo multiple enemies at once, even if those enemies are several levels above you, including elite mobs, including bosses. This build just gets it done, and if you play it right, it's very hard to die. We've got a lot to cover in this video, so let's jump right into it. We're going to start off this video talking about the stats on this build, and just to put it out there, stats on this setup are a little bit more complicated than some of my past builds, if you've seen those before. That's because this build is essentially a hybrid setup. We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. But for now, just keep in mind that your primary stat on this build is actually going to be Focus. Why Focus? Well, Focus, of course, powers the Life Staff in New World, and this makes our healing as strong as possible. Also, with the right option for your gem in your hatchet, you can actually have a portion of your hatchet's damage scale with that Focus stat. So not only are we getting the healing power, we're also getting the damage. Now, in addition to that, there are several very strong passives that you'll want to get from other stats, things like Constitution and Strength. I wouldn't invest a ton of points into either one, but you will be on the lookout for gear pieces that give you a bit of Strength and a bit of Constitution. That way you can reach those passive milestone bonuses. Let me actually show the stat sheet so far. We're not fully built out on this yet, but this does give you a good idea of where the build will be going. Now, like we said, primary stat is Focus. We'll be getting lots of nice perks for this. For example, we get 10% mana region at 50. We get 20 to the mana pool at 100. And this is really what you want. 20% healing output at 150 focus. This is going to allow us to wear either medium or ideally heavy armor for the damage mitigation, but still have very strong healing output. Now from there, I would go into Constitution. Always make sure you have at least 50 Constitution on your build, especially if you're playing solo for this passive. This increases your health consumable effect by 20%, making those potions heal you for even more. This is a very important passive to pick up. And on this build, I would actually go as far as 100 Constitution. That's because at 100, we increase our max health by an additional 10% of our physical armor. Now, max health, especially on a melee focus solo build, is so important, you guys. Max health also helps to scale up the healing of our hatchet ability. So yeah, the more health you can get, the better. And finally, we did mention strength. I would make sure you get to at least 50. That's because you do get some bonus melee light attack damage. And a lot of the damage of this ability is the hatchet light attack. It's super effective. It's fast. You can chain three of them together very quickly and you want as much buffs behind those as possible. Next up, let's talk consumables on the build. Of course, you will want the standard food buff that's either gonna be light rations, travel rations, something where you're getting that passive health increase in between fights. It's always important to start a fight with full health and you don't wanna waste any of your cooldowns of your life staff to get that done. Now, yes, as you level up cooking further, you can get some bonus attribute foods, you could get buffs, for example, to your constitution and your strength, but that does have a fairly short duration, like 20 minutes top, so I wouldn't bother investing too much in that unless you're trying to solo some very difficult content. Now, in terms of potions, generally, once you have all of your skills unlocked, you will not need the extra healing from a potion. That is, until you start to fight things that are, let's say, above your level, then you definitely will want some potions on hand. Of course, you can start off with the basic weak health potions. These will be good for about, you know, the first 30 levels or so. Uh, but once you get beyond that, you'll definitely want to upgrade to the strong health potions. These give you a ton of healing. And something else that I've been doing recently on my build, you can actually purchase some very good healing potions from the faction vendors. I'm not using my faction tokens for anything else right now. I can actually dump those tokens into something like the Powerful Healing Elixir. This is going to heal me for actually thousands of health in one shot, and it's going to be the perfect option for an emergency. All right, let's jump into the equipment next, talking first about armor on this build. As you can see here in the loadout, 
Uh, I am a heavy armor build. And so I've done that purposefully on the solo setup for just simply as much damage mitigation as possible. We're maxing out our physical, we're maxing out our elemental resistances for greater survival uh, when we're out and about soloing. Now, yes, there are some downsides to wearing heavy armor. The most obvious is you have 20% less or 10% less, depending on how you look at it, damage and healing. Now, we talked about it a little bit in the attributes, but you actually get bonus healing from putting your stats into focus. You also get at least 20% damage from the hatchet skill tree, the skills and the passives there. We're also using a gem on our weapon. So we actually have quite a few ways of increasing the overall damage of this build where it still feels good, it still feels powerful, uh, but we're still able to mix that with the survivability and the defense of heavy armor. So I like it. I think you'll find it plays really well once you get into the mid and late game. Uh, the survivability is just awesome. So to make that work, you'll obviously want five pieces on the body. If you're wearing anything less than five heavy pieces, you're gonna be missing out on that extra armor rating. So everything heavy, now, in terms of sets you might want to look out for, Cleric is a pretty good one. This set gives you Constitution and Focus. There's also the Nomad set. I believe this is also Constitution and Focus. Nomad tends to have more Constitution, while the Cleric set tends to have more Focus. You can also, remember, you can mix in some Strength as well. We talked about we want at least the 50 Strength mark for the bonus Light Attack damage, so sets with Strength is totally fine also. You'll just mix up your attributes depending. Uh, so the Monk set actually is Strength plus Focus. That's another one you might want to pick up. So those are kind of my top three. In terms of Jewelry, again, anything with those three, Strength, Focus, and Constitution will be the way to go. I like this Jewelry trait. The Health trait gives you more maximum health. If you can find anything at all with that, definitely pick it up. It's really useful when you're soloing to have as much extra health as possible. That also makes our Berserker heal uh, tick for more, by the way. We got a ring with focus on it and also a uh, earring with focus as well. Some extra mana recovery. So that's the armor. Again, really simple. Five pieces of heavy with your either strength, focus, or constitution as your primary stats. And now let's talk about the weapon next. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So to make this work, first off, you will want a hatchet with a gem slot. That is the number one thing. Now, the reason for that, as we talked about in the stats section, is we want the amber gem to give us this Arboreal trait. We've got Arboreal 4, uh, so that's 50% of the damage done is converted to nature damage, and that's going to scale off of our focus. This basically means your hatchet, even though it scales with strength and dexterity, a portion of that will actually scale up with focus, which is perfect for this build. Now, I don't have ideal stats on this, I'm still leveling up, obviously. Dexterity is okay for hatchet. I would prefer strength, strength and constitution, or a little bit of focus but this is fine. Now, I do like the perk, though, and you might want to check for this on Traders. This is called Refreshing Torrent, and every hit of Raging Torrent reduces all your hatchet cooldowns by 3%. So if everything hits on Raging Torrent, you're looking for at least 15% cooldown reduction on all of your hatchet skills. It's actually a pretty powerful perk uh, that you can pick up. Now, you don't have to run it just on the weapon. You can find armor pieces with that uh, Refreshing Torrent perk as well but it is pretty good. I believe there's also a perk for Berserker. It either increases the damage or the healing. I forget on that one, uh, but I will have information on that in the written guide. Link for that will be in the description. But that is the hatchet. Again, the main thing you'll want to get started is the gem slot. You'll want to pick up a cut amber gem as high quality, as high of a tier as you can get for that nature damage. Uh, now on the life staff, I've got dexterity and focus on this life staff. Again, not quite ideal, but I did like the perk I was able to find on this. Revitalizing beacon. Using beacon increases your healing power on yourself by 23% for 12 seconds. This is the perfect perk for a solo build if you're using the life staff. That is a ton of extra healing. Remember, we don't have any bonus healing on a heavy armor build, but this is actually more than the bonus that we get from light armor. So it's really powerful. And yes, we are using beacon, obviously. Now, just a quick note, this will only get buffed when you are on your life staff bar. So a little trick here is if you wanna heal up faster, make sure you're on your life staff. You can just block, you can dodge, you can try to avoid incoming damage because when you're on the, that life staff and you have beacon active, you're going to get that 20 plus extra percentage for your healing. It's really good. 
All right, let's jump into the skills section next, starting with our hatchet, of course. It's going to be our main damaging weapon on this build. And basically, we've gone with the Berserker tree and nothing else in this case. So we've got Berserk. This is a big part of that extra damage that we talked about, meaning you can still do damage on a heavy armor build if you're using the hatchet because you've got 20% damage done uh, while in Berserk. Now, in addition to that, we also have Feral Rush. This is good for moving around quickly. You can basically leap to a target uh, if they are getting out of range, getting you back into melee range so you can continue pounding them with that hatchet. And then, of course, we have Raging Torrent. This is for fast melee attacks with an option for a fifth attack with one of the upgrades here. Now, as far as passives or upgrades next, after you've unlocked these one, two, and three abilities, I would definitely go with upgrades. And you're going to want to start with Berserk uh, because the upgrades are just so good here. So On the Hunt gives you 20% movement speed. This can be used in combat or just out of combat when you're traveling from place to place to get there faster. Then, of course, Berserking Refresh. This is the heal that you get from Berserk. 20% of your max HP every four seconds. This is so good, especially early on when you're still leveling up those life staff skills. Berserking Refresh will definitely keep you alive for longer. Uh, Berserking Purge for removing crowd control effects. And then definitely, definitely get this one, Uninterruptible Berserk. Basically, while you are triggered in Berserk, your attacks are uninterruptible meaning you cannot be staggered. This is so good, you guys. It's so important to the build because, especially as you get to mid and end game, so many enemies just have stun and stagger effects that you basically, you won't be able to go through your abilities, your longer abilities like Raging Torrent and Feral Rush, uh, if you don't have that uninterruptible status on your character. So that basically lets you hit for all of the attacks uh, in your toolkit, basically. So it's super important to pick up this upgrade to Berserk. Next, I would max out Raging Torrent, so we do get Aggressive Approach. It's gonna give you Haste for six seconds, pretty nice. But then really the best one here for Raging Torrent is gonna be this upgrade. Final Blow gives you the extra damaging attack, so 120% weapon damage and a fifth attack. Remember, we also have that perk on our weapon that gives us cooldown reduction for each hit of Raging Torrent, so that's going to help with the cooldowns as well. Eventually, I will upgrade Feral Rush all the way. I just have the uh, Dispatch upgrade right now, so that's some bonus damage if your target is below 30% health. That's really good. Uh, eventually, Crippling Strikes for that extra root. Could be nice to like separate multiple targets, for example. Now, as soon as you can get it, you will want to unlock Defy Death, and this is so good. Basically, when you are about to die, you're going to actually avoid death. Instead, reduce down to 50 HP and gain Immortality for three seconds. This gives you just long enough to get out of range, use a potion, switch to your life staff, whatever you need to do to survive. Defy Death is perfect for that. Now don't overlook the passives either. They're actually really good for the hatchet, both offensively and defensively. Uh, Enraged Strikes, if your target is below 30% health, even more bonus damage there, 20% more on your light and heavy attacks. Accumulated power with three successful light attacks, you get the Empower buff, so that's 30% damage done on your next attack. Against all odds, increases your base damage by 10% for every enemy within 5 meters of you. And frequently, you guys, I mean, you can AoE grind with this build very easily. And in fact, the more enemies you have, the more this scales up, right? So if you have four enemies that you're fighting, you got 40% bonus damage at that point. It's really, really good to unlock this one. And then Fortifying Strikes is great as well. Uh, you get that Fortify buff, so it increases damage absorption for 15% anytime you deal three light attacks. All right, onto Life Staff next, and our three primary abilities here, as you probably have guessed, these are all our heal over time and our ground-based AoE heals. We've got Orb of Protection. This gives us 10% Fortify for 20 seconds. It also does damage, and it can heal as well. Uh, then we have Beacon. This does damage. Also, it attaches to the target and then heals nearby allies, including yourself, for 20% weapon damage. And then finally, we have Sacred Ground. So this is going to be an area effect on the ground heal for 15 seconds. Again, 20% weapon damage healed every second. So those are our three main abilities. Uh, by themselves, they are not super powerful, but what you will uh, see is that once you start unlocking the upgrades, this build becomes basically unkillable. The upgrades for these skills are so, so good. Let's start with the uh, beacon. I probably would max this out first. This is definitely 
Feels like your strongest heal for sure. The fact that it also attaches to targets and it does damage makes it really good to use in all situations. Uh, so Infused Light, this upgrade, this upgrade makes your beacon area of effect 50% larger. So this does make a very big difference. You'll definitely want this upgrade. And then follow that up with Radiance's Blessing for the 5 second bonus duration there. So instead of 10 seconds, it's now 15 seconds. Next you can upgrade Sacred Ground with Holy Ground. So this is going to give you some additional stamina and mana recovery. And then this is the really good one, Blessed. When you're in Sacred Ground, you're healed for 50% more from all healing. Finally, Orb of Protection does have a couple of nice upgrades as well. Protector's Blessing, this gives you an extra heal. Uh, and this works if you, if you cast it on an enemy, by the way, if you're standing next to the enemy and you cast the orb, not only will you damage the enemy uh, because orb does weapon damage, but you'll also get this recovery effect. So 7.5% weapon damage every second or 10 seconds. By the way, I forgot to mention this. This has one of the, the shortest cooldowns in the game, right? Only a 10 second cooldown and you have a 10 second heal duration. So you have basically permanent healing as long as you switch back to your life staff and cast orb every 10 seconds. I also have shared protection here. If you successfully heal an ally, uh, you gain fortify and recovery. Those are the upgrades I have currently. Passives are very good as well. For example, in the protector tree, bend light after you dodge, your heals are 20% more effective for five seconds. Again, this is only going to work when you're on your life staff, not when you switch over to the hatchet. Uh, but remember, we also have 20% bonus healing on life staff from being so invested in the focus stat. So anytime you're really, really low, remember to switch over to that life staff, hold block, dodge, whatever you need to do. You're going to start proccing all these extra healing bonuses, and it's going to shoot your health up to max. Quick showcase of all the abilities here. Starting on the life staff, we're going to use beacon into an orb of protection to get those two heals rolling and then switch to our hatchet berserk with feral rush to close the distance into raging torrent here get that fifth extra attack for free and uh, basically just wait until berserk runs out and then switch back to your life staff and do your two heals again either orb of protection and beacon or orb and sacred ground switch back to the hatchet do those damaging abilities again if you need to, go ahead and switch back, do your orb, do your beacon again. You should always have two heals running at all times. You can see I get hit really hard at the end by multiple abilities. That's when you would use your potion. All right, another boss fight here. You can see I've got my two heals down, but I'm a little bit out of range, so I need to move back into the circle. Remember, you can use Feral Rush for mobility and to push enemies back so you can stay in your circle. I'm going to use Orb of Protection again and chug a potion. Let's go back to the hatchet to try to get this add down. You can see my heals are off, so I need to do orb and then sacred ground. Make sure I have those active. Go back to the hatchet and pop that berserk for the extra healing, the extra damage. Go right into my raging torrent. Remember, that's going to buff those hits by 20%. Try to avoid that damage there. My heals are down. So again, beacon, orb of protection. Unfortunately, my beacon actually just fizzles. Sometimes it'll get stuck in the ground and it won't go off, unfortunately. So I do add my sacred ground right on top of it. And luckily I do because I get knocked down flat into it. I need to use another potion here, uh, but I'll go ahead and finish off this boss. And then these nasty little bombers. Uh, luckily I have Berserk ready, so I can pretty much just slice and dice all day long on these guys. Super easy to cut through them. They do count as lost, by the way, which are weak to nature damage. You can see those numbers that are in yellow are basically powered attacks. Anything the enemy is weak to is gonna do more damage. This build is very strong against lost or corrupted. Right, everybody, and with that said, that's gonna wrap up the Immortal Warrior build, the Life Staff Hatchet combo for New World. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, if you did, don't forget to crush that like button. And let me know down in the comment section below if there's any other builds you would like to see right here on the channel. Now, just a quick reminder, we do have written guides for all of our builds over on our website. That's rpgdojo.com. We'll have a full list of skills, upgrades, passives, gems, perks, traits, pretty much everything you need to make this build work. And we have a lot of other guides and builds over on that site as well, so it's definitely a great resource. Link is in the description and the pinned comment below if you want to check that out. But other than that, make sure you subscribe for more New World videos, ding that bell to get notified, and as always, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you around 
in the next video.